It has been said that if you wish to see far ahead in time, you must first look far back to find lessons from the past. The archiving of documents from the past and the present is an important source for architecture and design. It captures the passing of time. It is a testament to the evolution of the discipline. The following masterclasses record the individual processes of professionals and their ways of working. Hello, my name is Mara Perez Morillo and I'm the director of digital processes and services at the National Library of Spain. I want to focus today on the importance of preserving the online information and publication as part of the digital cultural heritage. I want to start making a question. Are we living in a digital dark age? Vinton Cerf, vice president of Google, creator of the TCPIP protocol and Prize Principe de Asturias 2002, is warning against it since year. Dark digital age is a real risk today. But what do we mean when talking about digital dark age? What are we going to have in 50 or 60 years of all the online information produced today? I'm afraid that when we look back in 100 years to the world we are living today, we'll see a big black hole of information, a digital dark age similar to those dark years of the Middle Ages between the 5th and 15th centuries. And what, we, what can we do to avoid it? collect and preserve as much information as possible. But we're talking about digital press, digital repositories, videos, apps, and eBooks. Among many other types of documents, it is indeed a huge challenge. Let's look back to what happened with the manuscripts in the Middle Ages, the difficulties to copy them at the medieval scriptoria, the lack of vellum, and the palimpsests as a consequence of it, and the chaos and destruction afterwards caused by the barbarian invasions. And then when the printing was invented, although it would seem that distribution and dissemination of books were assured then, but many of the first printed books called in Cunabula were lost. Apart from the big differences between that well and our present, the results might be similar in both cases. Scarce records of our world will survive for the future generations. A long history, the role of libraries, in particular national libraries, has been collecting and preserving the national documentary heritage on all kinds of carriers, beginning with the, with the one considered the first library of history, the library of Ebla in Mesopotamia, where a big amount of clay tablets was found, containing a wide range of content and of incredible importance to date historical events and to decode of the Samer and to decode uh, Sumerian languages, apart from many other testimony. What we preserve at libraries is all kinds of documents on very different careers with different levels of obsolescence and risk of loss. So it's one of our main missions to preserve for the long term all the information and documents we keep. A difficulty is added when we must keep working the different players to access the content. That's why most libraries are digitizing as fast as possible the documents they have on physical careers and developing long-term digital preservation infrastructures and policies. But now, with all the information generated and disseminated online, what are we going to do? Let's go back some years to have some context. In 1996, Bruce Tokale founded in San Francisco the nonprofit organization Internet Archive. His purpose was to build the Universal Library of Internet accessible for everyone. Today, Internet Archive provides access to more than 500 billion web pages on the internet, no matter whether the original site doesn't exist anymore. It is a digital library of websites. After that, the most important national libraries in the world assumed that this task of archiving the web was part of the role of preserving the cultural heritage, the digital documentation. Some of them starting crawling and harvesting the national webs. And in 2003, the UNESCO published its guidelines for digital preservation, underlining the enormous growth of online publications and their obsolescence, warning about the risk of information loss, 
on urging all stakeholders to afford the challenge of preserving the online information. Editors and libraries to cooperate and governments to enact legislation to regulate it. And in the same year, the International Internet Preservation Consortium, the IIPC, was founded to work cooperatively on the web archiving field. Libraries like the Library of Congress, the National Library of France, the British Library, or the National Library of Australia, along with Internet Archive, were among its founders. Cooperation on this field is extremely important. But what is web archiving? How do we archive the web? We use a robot, that is a software, that crawls the web and browses as a user clicking on every link he encounters and saving all the content it finds. This software, called Heritrix, was developed by Internet Archive and is basically the same software we use today to crawl the web. The robot crawls the web according to certain given parameters regarding depth, frequency, and size of the content archived. The format of the files obtained by the crawling is the ISO standard work of web archive, work of web archive. And the software we use to access the archived information is a Wayback Machine or the Open Wayback that shows the information archived as a live web. So according to the given parameters, we can browse in the archive as deep as previously established, no matter whether this information doesn't exist on the live web anymore. Many times in history, details of no importance at first sight revealed valuable information. <clears throat> For instance, the origins of the Spanish language are not in the main text of a literary work. The first, hint, the first hints of it are in some manuscript comments in the margins of a work written in Latin to help readers to understand the Latin text that they didn't understand well anymore. Also, ephemeral documentation is often of value as they reflect habits, traditions, practices of daily life, and draw a global panorama of a society in a given time. So libraries, along with manuscripts, ancient books, maps, engravings, and other valuable items, collect greeting cards, sweet wrappers, or children drawings, like the valuable collection of children drawings made during the Civil War, that the National Library of Spain preserves. In a similar way, websites, even those apparently less important, find information that may be valuable in the future to understand today life, today society, what we are interested in, what we eat, what we buy, etc. Many websites have disappeared from the World Wide Web forever and its content is unrecoverable. That's why we try to minimize the size of the dark digital age and why we crawl the web. Precisely because it is impossible to save everything, to crawl the web exhaustively, we develop different lines of action at the same time, bulk crawling and selective crawling. When we talk about bulk crawl, a national domain is required, like, like .es for Spain or .fr for France, so the whole list of the national domains is given to the robot that crawls everything in a long and global process without any filter or selection. Spanish web contains around 1,900,000 .es domains. So the domain crawl takes us about six weeks to finish. This depends also on the technical infrastructure every library has. The National Library of Spain launches a domain.es crawl every year and harvests around 50 terabytes of information each time. As there is documentary heritage in other domains like .com, .org, .net, etc., the only way to save this content is making selective crawls with different scopes. Events like elections, thematic like politics, music, or the COVID-19 pandemic, an emergency in case something important happens unexpectedly. Mostly librarians or information professionals have the skills to build these specific collections and manage the whole process of archiving them accurately. The general policy in most libraries is to run a mixed program of crawls to cover as much online content as possible. 
what what would what um, what is elective collection uh, uh, how how to 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 launch a selective collection depends on the institution policy based on priorities that vary from one institution to another the national library of spain became aware of the need to preserve the online content in 2009 when it hired internet archive services to crawl the spanish web for the first time on behalf of the library this contract between the non-profit organization and the National Library of Spain lasted four years and had as a result more than 100 terabytes of harvested information downloaded from the web that was sent from San Francisco to Madrid in 2014 to be allocated in the National Library of Spain servers as part of its digital collections. Also in 2009, the library entered the IIPC, the International Internet Preservation Consortium, as a way to cooperate internationally with other institutions that call the web. Thanks to this cooperation, in 2014, the National Library of Spain implemented its own web archiving system, Net Archive Suite, to run its own crawls, starting with selective crawls, and launching its first domain crawl in 2016. As examples of event crawls we have launched in these years, we have harvests about the death of President Suarez, the abdication of the King Juan Carlos I, all kinds of elections, the terrorist attacks in Catalonia, and about different topics like Spanish politics, COVID-19, climate change and environment, fine arts, music and audiovisuals. Today, the total size of our web archive is about 970 terabytes of information. Nevertheless, not everything is easy to reach for a robot. It cannot harvest EPUB format, restricted access content, and databases, for instance. To collect this kind of information, we need to use some other procedures. Both web archiving and other online publications the robot cannot crawl fall under the scope of the non-print legal deposit. According to the UNESCO guidelines mentioned before, Spain changed its legislation on legal deposit to include online publications as subjects of legal deposit. This happened in 2011. But the specific conditions of the online publications made necessary a royal decree to regulate how to manage the non-print legal deposit. This royal decree was enacted in 2015. And according to it, every online publication containing Spanish documentary heritage, including websites, were in scope. So, to collect the documentation not available for the web archiving software, libraries has to contact directly editors and publication flat platforms to ask them to deposit the publications in scope. So, following again the UNESCO recommendations, a big cooperation network is required, not only at the national level, but also at the international one. We need to gather all efforts and available resources to optimize them and be as efficient as possible in our task. Our digital cultural heritage is at stake. We still have a lot of work to do to get the publications that cannot be automatically harvested, to improve our infrastructure to be able to crawl more web content, to catalog or describe these special publications because it is a lot of documents and the traditional cataloging process cannot be applied, to find a way to give a flexible and useful access, preserving the copyright at the same time. This is a challenging task to tackle. And at the top, <clears throat> the long-term preservation for this kind of digital content, along with the digitized documentation we have been collecting since then. To sum up, we have a big challenge ahead and we must hurry up if we want to save our digital cultural heritage and avoid the dark digital age. But we are on our way and there are some reasons for hope. Thank you very much. <laughs>